I think it would be very bad. But, but uh, Gigi have done some weird stuff before that I had seen elsewhere. So I was like, uh, I don't uh, know about this guy. Yeah, no, I, I like this though because you get AP in the jungle position. It allows a lot of melee champions in the solo lane. Hey, as we continue our coverage of playoffs, Cloud9 and Rise have found themselves in the lower bracket after suffering a loss to Team Liquid. And they'll play up against the Golden Guardians who are still on the Miracle Run. Yeah, for Golden Guardians, I mean, the fact that they made it to playoffs was stressful for them. <laughs> like, having to deal with both CLG and, of course, FlyQuest to get to this position, I mean, was already a miracle knowing how bad Spring Split was. For C9, C9 is not only expected to win this series, but do it in a, in a strong fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one's going to be interesting. <laughs> I, I really enjoy Golden Guardians' level of play here. I apologize in advance. A <laughs> couple of tweets there from both mid laners. Amazing. Always fun to see. Perks and Blaze Olive, uh, two... Very differently experienced players at uh, this level of play. Hey, look at that! You want to watch those two tweeters play in the mid lane? You can. That's your free pro view matchup here. Amazing setup. Um, and I, I really enjoyed some of the interviews from uh, a Blaze Olive in particular, as he's going to have to back away. Or nowhere to be found here. Um, just talking about how he fully expected at least Spring Split to be a period in which he was just learning, growing, won't look as good, of course, but he actually really performed. Uh, really well in Summer Split and would be the strongest player on this team, I'd say for sure. You can make the case for Licorice when he came in, but Ablaze Olive, you know, consistent throughout the split, had a fine Spring Split and ended up getting second place, if I'm not uh, incorrect there, in terms of the Rookie of the Year award. So it's going to be a fun one. Well, on the uh, subject of Golden Guardians, the Tigress is in fact standing by with Golden Guardians and Arrow. Thank you so much, Pastry Time. I had to get some words from Monero. Obviously, Team Liquid had a clear line of attack against Cloud9 last time around. Are you aligned with their tactics and or is there anything that you learned from that series preparing for today? Uh, yeah, no, there's obviously like, that, that was an interesting series. I think the supports spent more time in top lane and mid than they did bot lane the whole time. Uh, we definitely watch it, learn some things from it. I think C9 obviously did too. They got rid of Ziggs, which is enabling a lot of that. But yeah, we're still prepared. It's a fun game to watch, fun series. Yeah, on the side of your draft here, why did you bust out the Lilia today? Oh, can I really even go into depth with that? <laughs> what you want That's to say? That's so unfortunate in the series to ever talk about. Um, I mean, it's just a jungle pick based off of what they picked in the game. Um, really can't say much more than that without like giving stuff away. But it's something that Iconic's really comfortable on. Um, he was feeling it and busted it out. Yep. Yeah, just playing for comfort, seeing how it goes. Last thoughts from you are on the mid lane matchup here. Perks was a clear priority from Team Liquid last time around. How do you think a Blaze Olive and the team are going to factor against him today? Yeah, right as he's going in. Uh, hopefully well. Like, I have a lot of confidence in, uh, in Nick, like, especially with Tristana. It's a pick that he's just constantly been willing to pull out. Uh, he was trying to play AD at one point in the past. I'm sure you've seen with like us playing Lucian, Tristana, and Callista. So it's a pretty nice pick for us that we just enjoy having him on. Helps have a lot of priority early game. Help him kind of dictate what's happening on the map. The versatility continuing to come into effect. Thank you for stopping by, Anero. We're going to head things on back to the cast. Yeah, great information there. I mean, just at the very tail end of it, talking about the priority of the lane, it's, very, it's always been the case for Tristana. And I think working alongside Iconic here, for me, has always been the goal, or at least what Golden Guardians have been working towards. They've had very bloody early games. The champion kills per minute is actually quite high for this team. And a lot of it's been based around getting a Blaze Olive out of lane and trying to set up for like well-timed dives. They're going straight for Perks now. Oh, yeah, I don't think connected. Not that it would matter, of course. Lilia not six, so can't put Perks to sleep. But Perks gonna proc the face rush and hold on to his flash. A Blaze Olive already has TP'd back into this mid lane and Perks is under a lot of threat. You have no mana. You have to get out of this lane very quickly as Rise. Yeah, it's not too bad of a situation because of what you just mentioned. He's holding on to the TP. So that was a call purchase that Blaze Olive was able to get for himself. Meanwhile, I mean, sure, he's going to be coming back with tier boots. I think both of them are just going to be fine. He's going to be able to TP back to, and pick up this full wave. Uh, my question is, what is Blaze Olive going to use with this pressure? On this time where I'm expecting a ward to be placed around Raptors, and see what it ends up being. Okay, just trying to get an idea of uh, where the enemy jungler is and just getting, if there are any wards in Tribush, there are none. So that's good information for Golden Guardians. Yeah, also did put that ward down that you mentioned, kind of has it in the intersection right uh, outside the Raptor Pit. So we'll have 
good vision of any rooms to the area or the jungle being down there. Uh, Iconic is also on that side of the map, so if there was a desire to set up for bottom lane, there is maybe the opportunity now, but Blabber going to move down, sweep out anything, make sure there's no forward vision for Golden Guardians. And it looks like Golden Guardians, with a little bit of info that a Blaze Olive has given them, going to go ahead and push their wave in and take their reset. So it is kind of hard to see the big picture, but actually a nice little bit of interplay there from Golden Guardians. Yeah, and I'm expecting now that it's hit five minutes, a ward to be placed on Rift Herald. Both teams should kind of center their focus around that. It's always been the case whenever First Dragon is something that both teams don't see immediate uh, uh, benefit from. So in this case, it's going to be Cloud. So I expect uh, Golden Guardians to be the ones that hit it first. Um, it's been the case that top lane's been getting pushed. Same thing's been happening around Ablaze Olive. So they should be the one on objective first, getting control wards down on that one. Chime is here, though. Let's see who ends. A fight really shouldn't start here. Blabber's here on the same timer as Iconic was actually topside for Krugs. Yeah, Blaze Olive should know that uh, this is not something he wants to do. Vulcan obviously showing in the lane, so definitely not going there now. Iconic level 5. Going to force the Abyssal Dive away there from Fudge. But Iconic not feeling like he has enough info to confidently take that ward out that he did find with the Sweeper. And that's going to make Cloud9 move down towards this Dragon. Yeah, I mean, he showed himself topside too. So the ward, they probably didn't expect it to be there when he ended up showing himself very easy for Cloud9 to just go on the first Dragon, and that's going to be Dragon stacking. If we're to look about the full split here for both teams, Golden Guardians have actually been far more objective-focused than Cloud9. They've had a higher percentage on both Dragon and Rift Herald. They've just been the team that have always been on top of it. I think the major concern has just been whether or not the fights have been there for Golden Guardians. In fact, the last time both teams faced off, it was Golden Guardians being in a positive position, going for Baron, and then losing, as you would expect, off of, of the fight that preceded that. So I think Golden Guardians just want to be able to team fight better, um, at least in this series. All right, well, kind of interesting setup in general for this first game. Hook, very nice attempt there for Volcom. It doesn't get it. Iconic down towards this bottom side again, but he's going to clear out that vision. So again, Cloud9 do know. Uh, this is definitely comfort for Golden Guardians in general. Obviously, Anero didn't want to give anything away. Yep. But Lilio's a champion that Iconic is definitely very comfortable. And we've seen that with his history in the past when he first entered the LCS. The other thing is, for me, that's interesting is Cloud9. This is an extremely safe first game draft. There isn't anything super aggressive. It's lots of stability, lots of good mid to late game, lots of good team fighting. Like, they're not interested in taking chances or risks against a team like Golden Guardians. Yeah, and there's some great playmaking tools built in, not just from, you know, the Rune Prison or at least the ultimate that Perks has that we've seen uh, in the best of hands, like Xiao Hu, you can really make games just based off of great alt timings around Baron. Uh, or, I, I love this combo of Trundle Thresh. Just basically throw down the pillar and you ha you force a fat flash off the enemy uh, just because that Q that's coming in from Thresh is almost guaranteed. So that's something to look out for for Cloud9. Uh, meanwhile, Golden Guardians here uh, just have great range based off Tristana and Aphelios. So front to back, they're definitely going to be looking at that. Uh, I'll be favoring Golden Guardians from that perspective. Lilia, you're right, is an interesting one. Uh, received changes there where her Q cooldown did get increased, but also just the, the blatant AP that she gets on her Q is actually increased as well. So you are incentivized of going straight AP into your build. Leandris is something that I'm expecting here for Iconic. And he has Phase Rush. So dealing with the melee members, specifically Trundle, is actually going to be favorable to him. So we'll see how it ends up going. There is a case to be said that if you just get slowed off pillar and picked off with thresh hook you're just doomed so that should be an early zone yes for him all right well this is a, the kind of the first major fight here as both teams are jostling for this rift herald iconic's gonna start a great hook there rupers are gonna kick it off and that's first blood of base olive dies in the air to vulcan <laughs> and iconic's like anyways i guess i'm leaving this rift herald Beautifully done there from Cloud9. Just instantly, Rune Prison comes back. It was an empowered Rune Prison, and Vulcan was on it with a quick flash on that one. So perfectly placed. They're going to be the ones that are gifted Rift Herald now. And I wonder where they're going to place it, because getting Vulcan out of lane early, incredibly powerful. So I'd want the Rift Herald to be placed bot side. So take a look at this. I mean, it was flat. It was fast the moment they saw him contesting through the bush on the left side of the map. He's like, okay, this should be an easy Rune Prison for me. It's going to cost. Vulcan to flash, but I don't think any play is going to be made in any time soon. Yeah, that flash not only gets first blood goal, but gets C9 the Herald as well, which was what Golden Guardians 
were looking for alongside Cloud9. So very effective use there of the CC, combining and Vulcan getting out of that lane nice and early to try and affect the map. And again, this is kind of like what I expect from Cloud9. Vulcan has been very consistent, right? Fudge has as well, but yeah. he swapped to a tank, Perks is on Rise, and Vulcan's got the Playmaker. They first picked this Thresh. Like, to me, this is putting power in the consistent hand for Cloud9 and decreasing the volatility in the game. Yeah, I mean, decreasing it with a question mark, because one thing I picked up from an Arrow's interview that I agreed with, I mean, when Cloud9 went up against Team Liquid, it was essentially the supports just leaving lane, saying, all right, I'm gone. Uh, and that's what we've been seeing here from Vulcan specifically, has been constantly mid, and oftentimes with a numbers advantage over Chime who's been there, because while Blabber has been actually around just to see if they can make a pick off of a Blaze Olive, Iconic's been the one that's been farming. So while it's resulted in, in Iconic being able to pick up that you know, XP advantage and all these things, it's actually just been benefiting Cloud9 far more and making it harder for Olive to get the push. Well, as uh, it's probably going to be the focal point of this game. We saw in the FTX gold graph just a moment ago. It is Perks versus the Blaze Olive for the highest amount of gold. Perks currently winning. Makes sense, given that he did just get an assist off that first blow. But that hasn't stopped the Blaze Olive from farming too much. He's going to cash in that call in, you know, 25 CS time. Uh, Tristan is going to be awfully good, especially in the front to back that Golden Guardians will have for themselves. And we'll have to watch the game develop because even though it's a very nice first kill and Vulcan is continuing to stay active, yeah. this is unlikely to be a game that's going to be decided in the first 20 minutes. We are going to at least the middle of the mid game to have some of these bigger objective fights. Absolutely. I feel like every Cloud9 game that I've seen during the regular season, it's been a banger. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, when they're behind a 3k goalie, they'll find that team fight. Later on, when they're ahead, it's the same thing. So team fights are going to be incredibly important. They're doing a great job around the vision, by the way. So it's completely dark here for Golden Guardians. They want to contest this. First Dragon's been there for Cloud9. Here comes TP. Vulcan already got ultied up by Chime. They're going to go in for the flash hook. Vulcan will be picked up there. Blaze Olive getting some revenge as Licorice TP down, looking for Sven, but not going to find it. Yeah, he pulled out a little bit too late because Perks and Blabber were already on the mid lane wave here. So instead of using that first push to get control of Dragon, they're just going to try and get as many turret plates here. So it'll be split between Perks and Blabber, but the goal was for the second Dragon, and Golden Guardian stopped that. All right, well, a uh, lot of attention mid lane again, continuing to get Perks uh, further ahead in gold. He'll hold on to that lead. You have to imagine Dragons being split isn't bad. Cloud9 will happily trade away that mountain. Yeah. And uh, Infernal Soul is going to be the one that will be important for both teams. But again, kind of the theme of this game is it is not going to be super quick, right? The teams are going to be playing for that soul. True. This has definitely been different from the higher champion kills per minute that we've seen in the regular season versus now, where it's definitely going to be a lot more measured. That's just playoff play. You know, sometimes you get bangers. <laughs> uh, you know, woke up in the morning watching the LEC matchup and you get like crazy games. But here specifically, when you're in a knockout situation, you do not want those uh, uh, mistakes really costing you. Individual mistakes, more importantly. Uh, so in this case, Cloud9 made the call. They could have gotten, should have gotten second dragon. One mistake was made, and now Golden Guardians are still in it. It's uh, FTX Gold Advantage 600 or so right now for Cloud9. Uh, so not too big, but again, game trending in the right direction, especially for Perks. He's got the blue buff right now, feeling awfully good about his 1v1 with those turret plates being worn away. He's got a less than a minute to finish them off. Probably not going to get them, but hey, still got the gold lead off the Herald. Yeah, major items are coming through right now. Shield Bow being picked up from Stick, say from Licorice. It was a uh, Gore Drinker and an Anathemas from Fudge. So hey, these, it's going to definitely embolden these teams to want to take more fights. The next dragon you would imagine would be the case. It is an infernal, uh, 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 you know, map and soul. So it's going to center a lot of the teams away from Baron and towards that objective. And also increases the creativity with the walls that it ended up breaking. So I think that would favor Golden Guardians to a certain degree, knowing that Renekton now has more freedom for flanks. Uh, as I say that, forget about perks. As a player, yep. his career has been being a playmaker. Try and oh, get caught this out here. Such a good setup there. Pillar into Realm Warp. And the Everfrost is done. So Perks makes the Rome look oh so easy. As I say, playmaker Perks, playoff Perks. He promised it in Twitter. <laughs> and he also just made it happen. There's way too much vision there for Cloud9 for Chime to be out there alone. So now it's going to be impossible for Stix8 to take the bottom lane wave, knowing that he's not going to have the support. Makes it C9 is now emboldened to take full vision of the enemy blue side jungle. Yep, Vulcan just. Plopping wards into the brushes. Plenty of vision there as Golden Guardians are going to have to fend off the rest of Cloud9. So coming into this series, 
uh, Zven led 80 carries, 9.8 CS per minute. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, basically perfect CSing as a Blaze Olive gets hooked. Oh, that's such a good chain CC. But the rest of Golden Guardians there. No one can follow up, though, and Perks barely takes any damage in trade. Yeah. He that's a 2v4. Insane, right? And it started with Vulcan's hook, so it's congrats to him basically stymieing that play from Golden Guardians. Blabber's got to have to walk out here, but my point being, the entire movement from Cloud9, the vision control that they have bot side, uh, two waves where Sticks A literally had to lose it because of either uh, Chime getting picked off or uh, liquor, uh, Iconic showing on top side of the map, it's making it so there is a huge goal difference now in the bot lane alone. Perks is leading the pack, of course, 6,200. So the carries from Cloud9 are, are thriving. And I think for me, like, one of the stock things, especially compared to at least the regular season, is, like, how many games have we seen FUD go off in a different matchup? Yeah. And how many times have we gone top in the first 15 minutes of this game? Like, once? <laughs> yeah. I think that was the second time in 15 minutes we've seen the top lane. I mean, nothing's happening, right? It's Tom Kent weak side farming up a storm. Licorice getting a lead. That's A-OK. -okay, but Golden Guardian's trying to wrestle control back at the top half of the map. And Cloud9 are already ready. Blabber there with the pillar. Iconic nowhere to run. Going to have to flash out of the way. Perfect pillow placement. It was expected that it was going to be a thresh hook that follows it. So that's going to be a flash that comes off from Iconic. And that's how c wants to play their draft. If you have Varus with Poke, you have Trundle, Thresh, and a Tom Kench, you have to play these fights slow. As I say, that TP coming through, let's see if they can get the kill on Olive. All righty, Fudge, it's time to go somewhere else other than top lane to blaze Olive. That's a long get lane. Get the reset. Great buster shot in the air there. And that's Scythe. Was gonna say he's gonna be okay. I lied. Good flash. He's gonna get out with the help of the blast. Combo C9 make it very expensive for Blaze Olive. Yep. Uh, Blaze Olive all the way down bot lane alone in a long lane. I think Cloud9 recognized that the rest of the squad, including Iconic, was topside. They made the play happen. Great job there. That will mean that TP is down. So pretty sure they're gonna have to keep Fudge down there just for the dragon pickup. Golden Guardians are actually going to be pretty late on the map for this one, so I almost feel like they're going to have to concede the second dragon over here. Yeah, with uh, Licorice going for top lane turret means that that's going to be a second dragon here for Cloud9. Yep, definitely a trade. Uh, Iconic has the Herald as well, can maybe drop it uh, in mid lane if they want to look for that play, although with how uh, short the distance is between mid, outer, and the dragon, not the easiest thing to crack, but at least they'll get the gold off of Licorice taking that top lane tower, give themselves a bit more space, give Licorice a bit more gold. Yeah. But they will forfeit the Dragon as a result, and Cloud9 actually going to get a two-for-one deal here. Sven finishes off the mid outer tower. So yeah, so if we just take stock mid lane turret down, which means that it's going to be even more effective for Cloud9 to invade. Oh, wait a minute. Close. Really close. Had no idea, too. You could you probably say that Vulcan, you saw Vulcan entering the space, so he didn't want to fully commit, but that was going to be a pick there on Licorice. All right, well, Herald drop. This is the play for Golden Guardians. Counter pushing mid. Herald should be able to get this nice and easily, but can try and line something up. Little more committal for Nautilus than Thresh to throw those hooks out, so they're not going to go for it. Just takes a safe play, gets the tower, gets the trade, and Golden Guardians keeping that gold close. All right, at least they're still in it. And I feel like, once again, it really is a game on uh, Tristana and Aphelios and how they're positioned in fights. So if they're in a really comfortable position, then you can make a case that Vulcan's not going to be too sturdy in a fight. Blabber um, trying to figure out where his ultimate would go, probably on either Nautilus, um, you know, especially if Aftershock's being procced, or Licorice. They're not going to be incredibly impactful, but it keeps him in the fight a little longer. But that's just a lot of constant DPS coming in from Golden Guardians, so that's something to look out for. But that's a lot of stopwatches on the side of Cloud9. That's one for Perks, another for Vulcan. So they can, they can definitely play these fights out creatively. Yeah, I mean, very disruptive backliners on the Cloud9 side. Like Tom Kench now just like presses W in the middle of a yep. team fight, tries to lock down a carry, Trundle just pillars someone, runs at them, right? Because, you know, if you can't, if you fight someone else other than Trundle, Divine Thunder of Trundle is going to kill you, yep. right? Uh, it's not, you know, an assassin, but he's enough of a threat that you have to, you can't ignore him. And if you're hitting Trundle rather than trying to kill an enemy carry, chances are if the backliners are, if frontliners are in your backline, you're not winning. And that's my concern is the damage spread. For sure for Cloud9, it's solidified. Zven and Perks should be dealing constant damage. Uh, but from the Golden Guardian side, their sole AP is an Iconic. Iconic needs to be ahead for this game to feel really good for Golden Guardian scaling. Oh, He's what an interrupt. Out. Licorice finds a stun. Go to sleep. Fudge now drowsy. Eat. And there's the bat coming in. Thick skin still available, though, and there's just not enough damage. Leandris is there, but that's not it. Yeah, not even close, honestly. He's going to be able to regenerate about you know, a little bit of that, go back to 30% HP. And so now that's ultimate being lost there from Iconic. 
It's going to be pretty costly. So they're not really going to be able to defend the wards around mid, and it's going to be still Cloud9 holding control here. Where is everyone else? Uh, looks like bottom side right now was Perks. That makes sense. He's going to be pretty permanent side laner in this game. In fact, just ever frost the wave. Yeah. Wants to get it pushed out ASAP. I imagine a blaze of. Yep, he is the one to catch it. So there is a push and pull of the side laners here. But as we've kind of seen already, it is significantly less safe for a Blaze Olive to be alone in a long lane than it is for Perks. Yeah, and that's for me what it comes down to is for Perks, he has a lot more freedom on side lane, especially if he's in a 2v1 position. I mean, he has uh, phase rush, so that's going to help him out. He has ultimate as well if he can play that out creatively and all these things that are going to make him feel a little bit more safer. Where we saw when he was uh, a Blaze Olive was getting double teamed, sure, he had his W uh, so he can jump out, but he needed to blow flash. So those are the kind of distinctions we got to make on side lane. And then, of course, like talking about the damage portion of it, before the skirmish happened, I Iconic just needs to be ahead. And he's under constant threat of thr uh, Trundle Pillar. Speaking of that. Oh, that pillar is so sick. Iconic, though, looking to make the play. Finds a two-man sleep. And ulti out there. Chime moves in. The damage is good with the depth charm, but now going golden for two. Fudge there. Does devour. There is a Blaze Olive. Found the back line. Iconic is going to fall down. A Blaze Olive just can't do the damage. Now Tom Kent popping into the back line, but the AD carries from Golden Guardians are still alive. But it is just not enough. Realm Warp forward. Perks under the towers. Ven takes out Sticks there. A Blaze Olive. And that's going to be a pod lane ace in 21 minutes. All right. Cloud9 is empowered. They're hitting the criticisms, and they just slap Golden Guardians around. Big props to Fudge I saw in that last fight. Protecting Perks from that Renekton flank. Put him right with the rest of the team, so he was well protected on that one. And it put uh, Licorice actually in a pretty bad position. So the initial engage came through from Chime, but no one could follow up. And that turns in now a huge win for, T uh, for Cloud9 and a Baron off the back of it. Alrighty, so a game that was somewhat close. Gonna feel significantly less close after that one. C9 get it all off the back of this play. Let's just take a second look at this one because it started with a great pillar there from Blabber. Vulcan was on top of it as well. Man, oh. he was basically stuck in the wall at the beginning of that one. Needed to use cleanse instantly. But take a look at where they're positioned. A great ultimate there from the Thresh made it so. Chime, Iconic, Sticks A really couldn't push in through uh, the crevice there and actually damage the back line. I already talked about how instrumental Fudge was in this fight, being able to protect Perks on the front half of it, so Renekton couldn't do anything. And so for the rest of this one, this is just a cleanup. Heroic cannon minion there for Perks. Realm Wolfing in under the tower to make sure that happened. No! <laughs> All right. <Yep. laughs> kind of how it feels to, to be on the receiving end of that play. But uh, Cloud now will exit that. They were. 1,000 gold ahead. Now, FTX gold advantage up to 5k is iconic. Look at to make play still on the top side. 1v3 for old Fudgy on the chase. top lane. What a flash! Gets his way out of there. Yeah, and they didn't want to follow up on that, and partly because Licorice and Iconic just don't have flashes, so even if they wanted to, definitely can't follow up on that. So, in the end of the day, that's just third dragon being picked up from Cloud9, and Fudge ducks away from another uh, gank top side. So, right now, Cloud9 has such an instrumental lead, it's insane. Yeah, it's only getting worse, unfortunately, for Golden Guardians. It's going to be a very tough siege to try and stop. 6A busy in the mid lane has to deal with that. And they've got two carries. You know, that's decent wave clear, but you cannot get to the wave safely against this team. And Cloud9 just going to bust through the bottom side, take out that inhib almost. Depth charge out. TP coming through. Now the counter punch there. Licorice going to get shredded to bits. Perks takes him out. Ulti out of Sticks. He does barely any splash damage as Fudge. He's just roaring through the front side. Vulcan again can't miss with the hooks. It's a blaze off. Get his way out of there with the rocket jump. But they lose the inhibs. Ven almost finds the snipe on the back end of it. And Cloud9 might just end the game on this Baron push. Oh my god. Licorice got his slice and dice cancelled by the pillar. This is the best trundle play I've seen in a lot. I mean, like. And ironically, the yes. Yes. Blabber and Vulcan have just been on point this game. And they're not going to uh, go too far here. Their, their tempo is a little uh, rough, but I mean, they got Imhib bot side. They're going to base. Next fight almost feels like it has to be around Dragon, and that's three minutes away. This is a tough one here from Golden Guardians. And, I, you know, it feels so impossible for them to take this win, even if they even like, get a great team fight, because of how chunky this Tom Kench is. He is on two items and is just straight armor from the rest of it. Uh, so, you know, a Blaze Olive and Stick say the concern that we had about them not having really much damage spread is true. They just don't, they cannot uh, pierce through the Kench. And uh, typically, when you cannot kill the Tom Kench, 
That is a problem. That is an issue. That is a very big problem. One of the reasons Tom Kent just felt so powerful is that when he gets ahead, just kind of unkillable. Realm Warp here for perks, very cute. Licorice to target, no flash. Can slice and dice away. Abyssal dive, gonna miss. Licorice is like, please, somebody help nah, me. Well. Wolves uh, gonna block up perks a little bit there, and Licorice does indeed get out, but the damage has been done off the back of that Red Bull Baron. Next wave is coming in. I mean, they, and they know that Styx Ace top side here, so they could commit for this mid lane turret if they wanted to. Good base here from Styx Ace knows he, he needs to be here on time as this wave comes through, or a dive is inevitable. Here we go. Chime actually getting slowed there. It's three items done. That's for a Bay, long TP Cyril from Licorice. That's a very long TP. He's going to play the long con, but perhaps he has fooled himself. Pops Dominus, the flank is on now, but Chime going to find Vulcan. Bobby going to get knocked up as well, but Renekton is getting zoned off. The rest of his team by, by Perks, and now Chime's dead. <laughs> Blabber with the pillar again is able to take him out. Licorice just could not find the flank. Stixa going to die in the front line of Blazel trying to do what he can, but Vulcan is just going to slay everyone as Blabber finds a double now. Iconic will get the sleep, but he does not get the yeep, and everybody lives on the Cloud9 side. As Licorice is just left in the middle of mid lane, wondering what happened. And Cloud9, they're going to take this Nexus here in game number one. And this was a fast one. 25 minute win. Another kill there. Just added to the books, 13 to one. What a monstrous win there from Cloud9. Uh, Licorice tried, but he was caught in multiple CCTV cameras. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Security system's pretty good when you're that far ahead in the game.